organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, plans to build a new justice center are back in the works. Find out the latest developments. And crime has increased dramatically in Iowa City over recent years. But exactly what type of crime? We will have the details next. And in sports, find out how the Hawks will line up against the Fighting Illini as they kick off the Big Ten Tournament Thursday morning. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowa TV starts now. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now, you can see the news every night on Daily Iowa TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for tuning in to your Wednesday edition of Daily Iowa TV. I'm Brad Maxwell. And I'm Allie Wright. Plans to build a new jail in Iowa City appear to be back on track. Last week, county officials got in a shouting match over how to pay for a $48 million justice center, which has been in the works for years. The Johnson County Board of Supervisors said that they would call off plans to build more jail, jail cells and renovate the courthouse. However, county officials reconciled their differences at a meeting today. Pending approval from voters later this year, the county will issue bonds for about $47 million of the new project and pay for the rest with savings. For more on this story, read tomorrow's print edition of the Daily Iowan. Shoplifting in Iowa City is affecting local businesses in a negative way. But why has shoplifting become an issue? And what local police are doing to slow down shoplifting? Daily Iowa TV's Nick Rector has a story. Nick Rector reporting from the University of Iowa campus. Here in Iowa City, it seems shoplifting has increased over the past three years. But why? And what is the police department doing about it? There were 191 cases of shoplifting in Iowa City during 2008. But as you can see here, the number has grown quite a bit. In the span of just three years, the amount of shoplifting in Iowa City has almost doubled. And on Monday alone, the Iowa City Police arrested eight people for theft. Now normally big retail stores are most commonly hit by shoplifters, but it seems no stores in Iowa City are safe now, as downtown businesses are having trouble with the issue as well. The End Zone, a Hawkeye clothing store located downtown, is having major problems. To slow down shoplifting, the manager posted this sign in his front window, allowing two or less minors in a store at the same time. Right across the street at the Den, a worker stated they were also having trouble with shoplifters, and his manager was talking to Iowa City Police to solve the issue. Daily Iowan spoke with Sergeant Brotherton of the Iowa City Police, but she insisted that the increase of shoplifting is not a big enough jump to consider a problem. She also stated that it has nothing to do with the economy, and that there is nothing to worry about. But why? Why is she not worried? You would think that a near double increase in shoplifting in the past three years might be alarming to a police sergeant. I guess not. So today, I set out on campus to see what some UI students had to say on the issue. It is bad for the economy, it's bad for businesses, but what can you do? When people need something, they'll take it. People will start seeing like shoplifting as a white lie. It's okay every now and then, and so I think it will affect people in the long run. It can be very problematic for small businesses because they're losing a lot of money, and I know people that work at shops, and the shop loses a lot of money to shoplifting. With no answer to the issue, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens in 2012. Nick Rector, Daily Iowan TV. Congressional Republicans and oil industry leaders in Washington are calling on more oil production in the U.S. to combat rising gas prices, which has been a major topic this election year. Oil prices exceeded $105 a barrel on Wednesday compared to $75 per barrel back in October, and gas prices have risen nearly 50 cents since the beginning of the year. The number of new oil wells being drilled is down 39 percent, and proponents of drilling say that President Obama is impeding this effort for more U.S. oil production by placing billions of dollars in taxes on oil and gas companies. Democrats say that oil production has increased since Obama took office and that the recent spike in prices can be attributed to tensions in the Middle East and speculation by Wall Street investors. A group opposed to the development of new nuclear power facilities is spending more than $8,000 on television ads across Iowa. This is coming on the heels of Mid-American Energy announcing it, that it hopes to build a new $2 billion nuclear facility in Iowa. Opponents of the new facility cite safety reasons and are concerned that the new language of the bill could allow 
Mid-American Energy to increase rates to customers who fund the project. The Senate Commerce Committee is expected to look at the bill on Thursday. Still to come on Daily Iowan TV, March is National Social Work Month. Find out what that means at the University of Iowa. And in sports, after placing third in the Big Ten Wrestling Tournament, the Hawks are preparing for the National Tourney in St. Louis. Find out what you can expect. But first, let's check in with Muriel Kone to get a look at your weather forecast. Muriel? Thanks, Allie. We have just a few more days before spring break, and it looks like we'll see some warm weather to start us off. On Thursday, expect some sunny skies from the morning into the afternoon with a temperature of 48 degrees. The clear skies will go into the evening. Looking towards the rest of the week, it seems like Mother Nature will be kinder to us during the week of spring break, at least for those of us who are still in town. There is a nice sunny forecast over the weekend with highs in the upper 40s and 50s. But on Sunday, expect to see some showers that will come to an end with highs in the 60s and 70s Monday through Wednesday. So it looks like we have some good weather to look forward to. Back to you guys. The Associated Press reports that administrators at the University of Northern Iowa and the union representing faculty met this afternoon to finalize plans to close some of their academic programs. Officials said they hope to avoid layoffs by giving professors whose programs are cut one year salary and others benefits to leave voluntarily. The meeting comes after UNI students gathered in the main campus administration building yesterday for a study in, in the protest cuts. March 1st officially kicked off National Social Worker Month across the country. Daily Iowa TV's Josh Bolander explains how one Iowa City social worker is making a splash. While some may associate the month of March with greener grasses, warmer weather to get out and about in, and of course for Hoops fans, March Madness. You might also be surprised to learn that the month of March is actually National Social Worker Month. The University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics is playing their part in social worker appreciation this month as well. After announcing in a UI news release online that Lori Rotlin, a social worker in the Burn Treatment Center at the UIHC, is the recipient of this year's Hospitals Great Catch Award. Rotlin has been crucial in the Burn Treatment Center's analysis of the dangers of gel fuel candles. Hospital leaders honored Rotlin yesterday, and she has been invited to attend the National Patient Safety Foundation and Patient Safety Congress in May. While the field of social work may not be as glamorous or well-known as other medical fields, its importance and work is vital. Social work seeks to improve the quality of life and well-being of citizens by intervening through research, policy, and direct practice, teaching the afflicted and those whose human rights have been violated. There are three major national associations of social worker foundations in America, with the largest including 150,000 members. So as the grass gets greener and we head further into spring, let us not forget about social workers, considering we have one of the best right here in Iowa City. Josh Bolander, Daily Iowan TV. The Iowa House voted unanimously Tuesday to approve a bill that would eliminate the phrase mental retardation from most state laws, and the bill will now go to Governor Branstad for his signature. According to the Des Moines Register, the governor has expressed that he will support the measure. This is a part of a nationwide effort to discourage use of the word, which can be hurtful to people with a variety of disabilities. In Iowa, the phrase intellectual disability will replace mental retardation. And now we'll take a look at some of the top headlines from around the world. Teachers, students, and parents took to the streets before a school board meeting in San Diego Tuesday night to protest staff layoffs. During the meeting, the board voted to lay off more than 1,600 teachers and staff members in an effort to save nearly $125 million. And Christmas came early for tech geeks in California Wednesday as Apple unveiled its newest model, the iPad. The iPad 3 will feature an HD display, 4G wireless capabilities, and a higher camera resolution than the previous model. The starting price will be $499 and will be available on March 16th. And after 14 years with the Indianapolis Colts, quarterback Peyton Manning has been released from the franchise. The atmosphere was somber in Indianapolis as Colts owner Jim Irsay made the announcement. Former Hawkeye tight end Dallas Clark was drafted in the first round of the 2003 draft and has compiled 44 touchdowns over 4,000 yards under Manning. And now for your Hawkeye sports update, we'll go to Lauren Moss. Thanks, Brad and Allie. Now let's talk tactics. The Iowa basketball team lost its only game against Illinois this year by 11. But in tomorrow's rematch, Coach Fran McCaffrey thinks he solved one of the game's first major issues, stopping Illinois inside. 
Black and Gold need to shut down Myers Leonard, the 7-1 center who just put up 22 points and 14 rebounds against the Hawks just two weeks ago. This time, McCaffrey and company have a new plan to attack the Illinois big man. Are we going to play him straight up? Are we going to go get him? Are we going to double from the opposite post? Are we going to double off the pass? Are we going to double from the top? Are we going to double on a catch? Are we going to double on the bounce? Are we going to just change defenses on him? Are we going to play up? I mean, there's so many different ways. And, you know, you just you work on that more than you work on who the guy is. You know, you can put Archie there. You can put Stokes there. You can put Brommer there. Doesn't really matter. It's okay. This is what we're going to do, and typically we won't do any one. <coughs> excuse me, any one of those things for the entire game. You could follow me from Indianapolis all week on Twitter at Jake Abrams, and check back online at DailyIowan.com for video updates from Carver Hawkeye Arena. Jake Abrams, Daily Iowan TV. And the Hawkeyes rematch with Illinois in the Big Ten tournament will tip off at 10:30 a.m. Central on the Big Ten. And with spring right around the corner, Hawkeye football seems to already be on everyone's mind. According to documents released today, head coach Kirk Farron's son, Brian, will report to AD Gary Barta for performance reviews and salary sets. Barta said that once he was that he was the one to interview and overall hire Brian as a new O-line coach, and that Kirk Farron's quote, purposely did not participate in the process, end quote. Barter took complete credit for the decision to recruit and hire the younger Ferentz and said he would be Brian's supervisor going forward. It seems as if the entire Ferentz clan will be involved here at Iowa as junior James Ferentz is the Hawkeyes starting center and Steve Ferentz is expected to walk on as a freshman next fall, both being coached by both their older brother and father. And after a disappointing weekend in West Lafayette, the Iowa wrestling squad has to now focus on the national tournament. Daily Iowa TV Sports' Nick Robertson breaks down the Hawks' chances. After Penn State won the Big Ten title for the second straight year, Iowa's hope for a national title seemed impossible. However, if one stands back and looks at how the tournament played out as a whole, the national title isn't entirely out of reach. Of the ten that went to the Big Ten tournament, seven Iowans finished within the top three, while six finished within the top two. That is some serious overachieving for a team that was expected to finish third overall. And that is exactly what Iowa will have to do come this weekend. Iowa will likely only have a single one seed, Matt McDonough, meaning major upsets will have to come from the other seven. Four of those upsets will have to be avenged losses from last weekend. However, throughout the Big Tens, Iowa held a first place position for a large portion of the tournament. And during the final rounds, if Iowa would have won at least four of their six championships rather than two, they would have been neck and neck with now Big Ten champions, Penn State. However, the question remains from who will the overachievement come from? After his second loss to freshman Logan Stiber, you can bet Tony Ramos will be looking for redemption. And with this weekend being senior Montel Marion's last go around, one can expect some urgency. On a bright note, Iowa has already experienced overachievement with two six seeds, Derek St. John and Bobby Telford, making it to the championship match. Even though only one of them walked away as champion, it was a positive reminder of how quickly things can start going your way. Nick Robertson, Daily Iowan TV, Sports. The tournament starts March 15th in St. Louis, and that's all I have for Hawkeye Sports for tonight. Back to you at the desk. And before we leave you tonight, check this out. Harassment is nothing to joke about, but what do you do when the perpetrator is a 35-pound turkey? Edna Geisler finds herself in this predicament every time she leaves her home. The Michigan woman has used everything from brooms to umbrellas to ward off the bird whenever she steps outside, but he just won't leave her alone. The bird has never caused any serious damage, and despite it being an annoyance, Edna refuses to call animal control. That sounds like dinner to me. <laughs> And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek at Thursday's print version of the Daily Iowan. Read about how a decrease in funding for water quality could affect the future of the Iowa River. Plus, an update on whether the new Justice Center will appear on the November ballot. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or at any time at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night.